Hey guys, it's me here, Reem. In this video, I'm going to show you the, the Tinder script that I have. Um, and uh, that, really, that works really, really well. Um, I have adopted it from Alpha Male Strategies. I always give credits. If I miss them, I'll put them in the comments or I'll add them later. Um, so yeah, this script, uh, he writes it in his book. I'll, um, I'll use it here. Um, I have modified it a little bit with some tweaks. Uh, it works better for me. I like to give a little more personal touch. And I've also com condensed, I think, two sentences into one. So this basically is a, is a five, um, five um, amount of messages that I steer a conversation in that leads me to, to her number. And so far it's amazing how, how often I'll get this number. And of course this number is still, uh, I would say, it's not only, it's not always weak, but it's a, it's a weak, simple strategy to get the number. But what I notice, I think what happens is that women have their notifications for Tinder off uh, and their notifications for WhatsApp on. So that means that if I have their number and I send a new message, that message gets much more easily seen. And this is, of course, a great advantage. You can send her something in the early of the day or before going to sleep or when she's up to something, you can, you know, you get seen, your messages get seen. So it's, uh, for me, I think it's a big difference to get the number instead of just continuing on only on Tinder. Uh, besides these notifications, which is for me an assumption that she has a Tinder notifications off, it's, it's another advantage because she has already given something else so there is a little bit of an interest likely more that she gives out that number so having said that we got to the script okay so it's five five short messages that i use to organize my uh, my conversation with her and there are some moments where i'm a bit more flexible uh, but generally i'm leading the conversation with these five messages to end up getting the number I'll discuss them with you now, right now. Okay, first one. That's the opening message. Uh, good afternoon, I'm Reem. What's your name? Comma, and then her Tinder name. So of course, this afternoon is variable. Afternoon, morning, night. What's your name? Comma, and then her Tinder name. Let's say she has a Tinder name like uh, Andrea Paula X or whatever. Well, it's interesting. What's her name? Is it like Andrea Paula, Andre, Andrea, or none of these? You know, this is something I like to know because if you know her personal name, that's in the book of uh, I think it's called um, How to Win Friends, Influence People. Knowing the person's name is really strong to make a connection. So I want to know that right now. Um, so yeah, sometimes these Tinder names from women are confusing. Uh, sometimes they use a male name. Sometimes they just use a nickname. Sometimes they even use a completely mysterious, strange name that has nothing to do in relation with her real name. So I like to filter that a little bit and I like to go right away to the name. All right, that's the first message. The second one, um, I'll say she responds. And whatever her response is, I respond this. Good, and then her real name. What's your favorite thing to do in your spare time? So the word favorite here is very good. It, it leads her mind to think about favorite things. So she, she experiences a certain emotion after hearing this question. And of course, yes, yeah, she, she is thinking about in her mind. Yeah, I like doing this. I like doing that. That's also nice. Besides that, she... Um, she shares with me what she likes to do, which is a good indicator for her personality. Some women respond, I'm in Colombia now, some women respond they like to sleep, some women respond they, uh, yeah, I don't know, I don't have much spare time. These are really indicators, guys, how a woman is generally feeling in the week next to her obligations. So it's a good question. Whatever she says on that, I say, 
uh, that's great. How often do you come to the city and tell me your favorite spot? So I ask her, how much do you come to the city? Which kind of means um, how much is she in the city center? You know, In terms of time, is she close to the city? Very far from it, that's a little indication there. And tell me your favorite spot. She might say it's my pa it's, it's a park or it's a certain coffee place or it's a certain restaurant or it's a certain shopping center or whatever. It's another indicator. She likes talking about this guys. It's very inviting for her. She responds also a lot. So these are questions women like. Don't ask her like, hey, how many sisters you have? It's an information type kind of question that doesn't say too much about her. But asking about favorite things from women, it's something they likely respond to. That's at least my experience. If, however, someone does not like to respond to these questions, that's for me, honestly, an indicator that, okay, I, that would be a terrible date because I have to pull out information and she's not likely to uh, dance with me. You know, I'm, I'm leading in a way this dance with these questions. It's a nice one. She can jump in and play along. And yeah, if someone does not play along on such questions, I rather prefer to not have a date, to not have a date with someone and be locked up with this person for so many hours. So that's another thing. Let's see. Um, yeah. So how often you come to the city? She responds, and I say, ah, okay, great, or or good, or maybe even nothing. We should get a drink. When are you usually free? So after this, I kind of summarize it like, oh, you seem like an interesting person. Uh, you're great enough to have a drink. When are you usually free? So I'll ask this, when are you usually free? To let her have a look in the agenda. For example, she might say, I'm only free in the weekends. Uh, the weekdays I'm working. So this prevents me from having a question like, hey, can you meet Monday? No, I'm working. Ah, can you meet Wednesday then? No, I'm also working. You know, that I'm kind of like this, this seeking her time kind of uh, frame. This prevents it. When are you usually free? Great question. Thanks, AMS. Once more, bro. Okay. Let's see. So whatever she sent from that, um, which is normally positive, she, she sent some suggestions. I say, okay, cool, send me your number so we can set up a time to meet. And then she gives the number because the number is also not asking just her for her number. Like, hey, let's continue the chat on WhatsApp. She's like, okay, like, what do you want? No, it's like I use this number to set up a time to meet and I know when she can meet, you know? So it's a whole, it's a whole thing. It makes a lot of sense. There are reasons for everything. Uh, and she gives the... Yes, yeah, she gives the number. So these are five messages, guys. And this is very straightforward. Um, and of course, there are some variables, as I said in the beginning, the afternoon, uh, the, Tinder, uh, the Tinder name, her name. I'll bring this in to make it personal. Um, I like that. And uh, yeah, it's a little bit copy paste. It's a little bit more work, but I like to do it. Um, also, there are moments when, for example, when I ask her what's her favorite thing to do in her spare time, Let's say as an example, she says, I like to do, I don't know, yoga, breathwork, meditation. I might insert something like, oh, I've also done that. I've done a course in, I don't know, in Thailand for 10 days. And um, uh, it's amazing that you are busy with these topics. I can insert something like that and still after that, acknowledging her words, lead on with my question. So it's really important to have this script also a bit flexible. It's not literally copy paste and not reading anything. If, if there is a connection, if she says something valuable for you, comment her on that as well, and then add on and continue with the script. So yeah, guys, that's, uh, that's my message for you here. Uh, it gives me a lot of results. Uh, it gives me a great guidance. I don't have to read through text like, okay, what has already been shared or this and this. No, I'll just look at Tinder. I see, for example, two, five, six responses. I see, oh yeah, this girl, she replied to question three, to message three. 
So let's see what's in that and I'll lead with uh, message four. The other girl, for example, I see a number, okay. I'll store that in the WhatsApp. And some other one, for example, uh, yeah, she responds to question one with her real name. And let's say she's like, hey, what do you ask this question? Uh, can't you read my profile, blah, blah, blah. You know, these kind of comments are just uh, like why and, and her name or you know this kind of blunt irritated that's the important guys irritation if i sense irritation in a chat i might continue but most likely not because it's so early on that's that's for me an indicator that this person is not having a very chill life of course it can be a moment this and this yeah but you know we also have a tendency to create a first grade impression so if it's early on it's either an instantly erase or it's a mental note that I make like wow if this happens even just once more I'm really done but it's also up to you how you deal with that but yeah it's um, it's uh, it's all it's all indications guys so yeah I'll uh, post this uh, these messages also uh, in the comments so you can easily use them right away all right let me know guys how it works for you uh see you on the next ones